Hey guys, Tarek with Cyclone FPV, and we are now doing video uh, number two of the two-part series on the um, the $100 build, the second edition of the $100 build, uh, which uh, included the uh, HDLRC F3 V4 and uh, the Emax motors with the Emax 30 amp Lightning ESC. So we did the hardware build, right? And now we're going to do the software. Um, and uh, so part of that is going to be how to set it up on the basic side. Okay, we're not going to go into in depth. I mean. You, there's a lot of things you can do to change what, uh, what I'm going to show you, but for right now, I'm going to show you on the basic step, okay? So once you have the build, and I'm going to go ahead and switch uh, screens here, so bear with me a second. Uh, let's do this and see. Okay, so once you have the build here, right, uh, the first thing you're going to do before you go any further is go ahead and get your uh, uh, tester here, your meter tester, and just make sure for continuity. So we have the beep there. Make sure you test your ground and your positive and make sure you do not have continuity there before you go ahead and add power to it if you hear beep then there's a problem there is no beep here so we're good to go so we're going to go ahead and add power to this right now kind of get an idea of what we've got here uh, i also have not sealed off my receiver yet but i will go ahead and bind that in just a little bit uh, one of the things you're going to want to do is um, when you bind this make sure you've done your updates on your firmware and if you haven't there's a video i have out on how to update the firmware on the xm plus uh, and I'll try to put that link in this video, but if you if I don't or if I don't put it right Just uh, look under my videos uh, under fry sky videos and you'll see the tutorial on it in either case assuming everything's done And you follow the video and connected everything properly um, We're at the point now where we need to go ahead and plug into beta flight and we need to get everything set up So first thing is get your USB cable Mine's kind of got a bunch of stuff on it But get your USB cable and go ahead and plug it in and then what I'll do is I'll throw beta flight up here and I'll put the two screens like this. Maybe this will help. All right, so there's beta flight, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna plug in the USB cable, okay? First thing to note is during this video, I am going to keep the, um, I need to show you this, so let me just kind of zoom in here. Uh, let's do this real quick and I'll zoom in here for you. Uh, I am gonna keep the video off on this board. It does have onboard uh, VTX, as you know, and there is a white switch right here, okay? And I'll try to point to it right there, uh, right there. All right, so it's, if you look at the digital readout, uh, right under it is going to be this, let me see, it's hard to look at the screen, right there, okay? This little switch that goes back and forth, okay? To the left, or to the uh, LiPo uh, uh, pads here, uh, when you push the switch that way, that turns off the VTX when you plug in your LiPo, okay? I'm going to do that so that I don't lose uh, video signal, all right? So let me see now if I can make this screen any better. Let's see if I can do this, okay? I don't know if this... Uh, screen will be better, but we'll try it one way or the other. We'll make this work, okay? Um, so, that being said, it's time to go to our, um, uh, and you will see the number light up when it's off if you have the USB in, so don't worry about that, okay? Uh, that's going to remain like that where you can see the digital readout or the readout of the channel that you're on right there, the number four. But watch what happens as soon as I plug in uh, the uh, LiPo, and in this case, it's going to be a, um, a, uh, just a AC DC converter. Let me see if I can get that to go off here. Okay, I'm sorry, to the right. I'm sorry, when the switch is to the right, which means to the front of the board, away from the, away from the um, uh, uh, LiPo pads, that turns it off. And as you can see there, the VTX is now off. If I unplug it, let me get to that point here. The number will come back on just because that's the way it works. It's not, the VTX is not on, but the number will show up again as if the VTX is on, and it's not, okay? That kind of allows you to give it five volt power or USB power to change it, I guess, before you power it up uh, when you're around people. So in either case, that's that. Um, I just wanted to kind of make that clear. So make sure the switch, as a correction there, make sure the switch is pushed towards the front of the board, uh, or I guess better yet, just away from the LiPo pads, and that will turn the VTX off. So uh, if you want to work on the board while you do have power, while you're updating your ESCs, the VTX doesn't have to get hot, okay? So let's go back to our, um, let's go back to our uh, beta flight here. And what we're gonna do is, I've already plugged it in. I'm gonna click disconnect. I'm gonna go to firmware flasher. Now, I will actually go back to connect so I can show you something. Uh, if you wanna know what version is on here, this board runs Spracing firmware. But for those of you that don't know how to check that or wanna learn how to check it, just go to your CLI and type version. Uh, wait for my keyboard to kick in. It's uh, wireless, there it is. And so you can see you're running Spracing um, it's racing F3. Now this is 3.2.4. I am not going to go to 4 or anything above 4. I'm going to take it to 3.5.7. So I'm going to disconnect. I'm going to click update my firmware. I'm going to drop down to the spracing, which is right, right there. Okay. 
and I'm going to tell I want 3.5.7, and I'm going to leave it as full chip erase, and I'm going to click load firmware. Okay. Now, once I do that, I'll flash it, and um, you're going to see it now. It's automatically going to start, and there it goes. So we're going to flash to 3.5.7, and then we're going to go ahead and get the rest of this set up. Okay. And part of it is we're going to set up our receiver. And then I will heat shrink that receiver or just glue it down and put it on the pad that's under here that we uh, did when we were um, building it, all right? Uh, so give it a second here and I will continue to clean up my mess. And then we're gonna flash the ESCs and calibrate them. And from there, we should be ready to go, all right? Okay, it does take a little while because it is a uh, F3 board. I don't know who is this walking to my door here. Let me check. UPS, delivering some stuff. All right, we're just about done. Sorry, the delay is not my fault. Uh, there we go. All right, so now once we're done programming success, successful, we're gonna click connect, all right? And there we are. And I always go out of habit, I always do a reset Z-axis and calibrate the accelerometer. Now, uh, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and set our ports, and we're gonna set UART3 for our serial, okay? So just set it for our serial, and we're gonna leave that alone and just click save and reboot. So now we have our serial set. We're gonna go to configuration, and we're gonna come over here, and these ESCs uh, apparently support uh, multi-shot. I have not used it with multi-shot, but I'm going to try it on this video because I had a customer say he couldn't get it to work. So we're going to select multi-shot and we're going to turn our motor PWM off and we're going to set our minimum uh, here for me. I'm going to set it to uh, 1070. That is basically the RPM. When you arm the quad, uh, that is going to be the throttle level, I mean, uh, on your motors. Now, uh, the rest of this goes, I'm going to turn off barometer and magnetometer and I'm going to put this at like two and one and leave that for right now. Everything else is going to stay like it is. I am going to name it so I can uh, so I can keep track of this. This is going to be called the um, uh, I don't know for me it'll be CFPV DIY 100. Okay, and now I'm going to come down to my uh, input here for my receiver. I'm going to serial based and I'm going to select S bus. I'm going to turn off my uh, analog RSSI input. Uh, we will not be using that. And then I will see my options here with telemetry and anti gravity and so forth. I do not activate a dynamic filter, I do not use anti-gravity, and we will not be needing telemetry right now. So you can turn all those off, which will save your CPU load. Once I click save, now you can see here at the bottom where it says CPU load, watch when I click save, okay? Once I save and we get back into it, look at that. We were at 22% and now we're at 11%, okay? And that's important because you want your quad to respond quickly and part of that's going to be your CPU load. All right. Uh, power and battery, we're not going to worry about right now. PID tuning, we're not going to worry about right now. Receiver. Now, we're running an S bus on this one, so I'm going to go ahead and set this up. I know my receiver is TAER setup. Now, yours may be uh, the default, which is going to be AETR. You'll know when you log in, but for me, I'm going to select mine as TAER, and I'm going to change this to 1005 and uh, 2000, okay? And some people say you don't need to. This is important right here, though. This is basically telling uh, the system, I'm gonna click save real quick. So this throttle here has a value of 885. That's the default when you do not have your controller programmed yet, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna link mine. I've got my Tyrannus and my QX7 right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and link my QX7. Uh, and I guess I'll do that right now. So we're gonna quickly bind the receiver, all right? And so to do that, I am going to, uh, I need to get, I had an extension, here it is. So to do that, you're gonna to need to power up your quad. So I'm just gonna turn the quad sideways so I can get it to reach, right? And I'm gonna turn the DC power off. So make sure everything's off, right? And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna plug in your power. Well, if you're using DC, if you're using battery, then you have to um, kind of finagle this around because what you wanna do is you wanna power up your quad and you wanna press the reset button. And I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna zoom in on this because maybe that'll help a little bit. Okay, so we have a reset button, right? Let me move this out of the way. And it is right here, right? And to do that, you have to have that pressed before you power on the quad. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and power up my QX7. Welcome to the TX. Okay, and then I'll zoom out here. Uh, let, me, let me make this the main screen real quick. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom out there. Uh, try to make this easier, there we go. Okay, so I have just updated my firmware and it's telling me I have a card. So I'm gonna quickly just make a, um, 
a uh, I'm going to copy one of my uh, actually it's right here uh, no that's not it but let me go oh, hmm. no I'll go ahead and take that one okay so I'm going to select the Emacs model I think I set that as my um, default okay for this build so I'm going to go ahead now that is as you can see that is model number one for me right so I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and click page once it's highlighted I'm going to click page I'm going to scroll to the left so I can go to the bottom first. I have my receiver number is one. And what I usually do is I try to match my receiver to my model number. So receiver model two will have receiver two, and that's how I keep track of them, right? So um, I'm going to go ahead and go to my binding option. Now I have set up in here, uh, my mode is going to be D16, which is going to be supported on the XM+. Plus. I'm going to use channel range one through 16, and that way we can uh, attempt to add uh, RSSI down the road. Um, and then we're going to use the uh, receiver number is going to be one because it's model one and I'm going to click the bind button. Now here's what's going to happen. You're going to hear it chirp, but it's going to ask if you want to do one through 16 with telemetry. So I'm going to use telemetry on because we may add it later. Okay, so that's my option. Now I'm going to click the button again and you're going to hear it chirp. Once you hear it chirp, grab your receiver and this is going to be kind of tricky, but grab your receiver. I'm going to see if I can get this light to show you the light that's on here. I don't know what this standoff in the way it might not, but I'll try. Um, let me see how I can best do this. See if I can unscrew this real quick. Maybe I can do that and show you then. Okay, so let me do that real quick. Okay, now you can see the front of it. And what you're going to be looking at is right up here. So I'll try to zoom in a little bit more. And you're looking right here at this little area because this is where your LEDs are going to be blinking, okay? So not don't look at these LEDs because that doesn't apply. Only so let me see if I can cover those up. Let's see if I can put this right there, maybe, so that you don't see what's on the board. And you just focus what's on the receiver. I don't know. Maybe it'll fit. Okay, here's the receiver. I do not want to get it on the carbon fiber, so uh, all right, so there we go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold the boot button, or I mean the bind button, and you'll feel it kind of click. I actually, my fat fingers can't do it, so I'm going to use uh, one of my screwdrivers here, and I'm gonna, I, you can hear it. All right, that's it clicking, so I'm going to press it down, and I'm going to turn on the power. Now there's the red light, and right beside it is a green light. The red light starts blinking, and that means we're bound, okay? Now let go of the boot button, come over to here, and hit exit. Sorry, let me zoom out. Hit exit on your controller to stop the binding process. Okay, hit exit again, and one more time to go back to the main screen. Now, turn off your drone, and watch all the lights go off real quick. Now turn it back on, and that red light's gonna appear, and then it's gonna blink, and it's gonna go to green, and right now it's getting ready to initialize with the transmitter, okay? And you will see it here in just a second. Go. Okay, so our light is green, as you can see. All right, let me go ahead and just Put something under this so we can protect it. I don't want it to ground out. So, get this back here situated. There we go. All right. So, uh, well, it's 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 flipping here right now, and I have a feeling. Uh, all right, we'll leave it there. So there we go. I'll have to check the wiring on that. But we are bound right now. So if I flip over to Beta Flight, uh, let me do this, and then let me do this here, and bring the screen over. Okay. If you're looking at the screen right now. Um, we want the throttle to move. And so my default values, sorry about all that with the controller though. I, I did have an issue with my antenna and I thought I fixed it, but I didn't. So I'll try to keep it still so it doesn't go back out of signal. But right now with myself connected, uh, you can see that I have a value of on the roll of 1500. Uh, that's a center uh, value, uh, the sub trim. The pitch is 1500, the yaw is 1500. The throttle is 19, or sorry, 997, and I want it to be at 1,000, okay? And I'm going to explain to you why. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on my controller, and I hope you can watch the screen. I don't know. Maybe I'll do side by side, right? So let's do this and this, and we'll do side by side. That may be easier, okay? So I'm going to go on my controller, and I'm going to press menu, and then I, I see I've got my model selected. I'm going to press page, and I'm going to press it until I get to my uh, outputs, okay? On my outputs, you can see my throttle, and right now it's telling you that the throttle is at uh, 998 on the controller. Let me see if I can move this over a little bit. 998 on the controller, okay? And and you can see that on the screen there on Betaflight, it's at 997, 998, whatever. So let's get it to 1,000. So to do that, we're gonna press our enter button while the throttle is highlighted, all right? And we're gonna go to edit, press the enter button again. And now we're gonna go to our, <clears throat> our minimum. 
Our minimum needs to be a thousand. So we're going to hit enter and we're going to turn the dial to the right until we read a thousand. Okay. Now in beta flight, uh, at this thousand on mine, beta flight's reporting 998. I'll turn it one more time to 97.7. And now on my screen, it says a thousand and on here, it says a thousand. So we're matching. I'll hit enter again. Now I'm going to go to my max and I'm going to make sure it reads 2000. So my max is set. I don't need to adjust that. And somewhere in the middle, I need to be at about 1500. And honestly, this is pretty fair. I'm not worried about that. All right. Uh, it looks like it's good. So once we have this set and we're resting at a thousand hit exit and hit exit again, and now you can check the rest of them. If you want to check your uh, minimum and maximum, just take your sticks and push them to the minimum and then raise them to the maximum. As you can see on my roll, the minimum is at 1,004. So I'm going to go to my roll and I'm going to edit it and I'm going to go to my minimum and I'm going to hold the stick to the right. And you can see on my screen it says 1,006 on, on there on my QX7 says 1,006 and on the screen it says 1,004. I'm just going to turn this down till beta flight gives me what I want to see, which is 1,000. Hopefully I'll get them to work in conjunction with each other. It's going to be close. Okay, there you go. So both say a thousand. Now I let it go. Go to my max, 2000. Everything looks good. Hit exit and exit again. All right. And now we can go to our next, which is going to be our pitch. Uh, we are good there at, uh, at uh, 1500 and 1000 and 2000. Uh, and then we can go to our yaw. So our yaw is going to read uh, 1000 and it's going to read 2000. So we're good. So everything now is good. Just hit exit and get out of there. Now, what I wanted to explain to you was, and I'll, I'll now go back to this view. Sorry, give me a second to change this. There we go. All right. So what I wanted to explain to you was um, on the screen here where I did the stick low threshold, right? What that means is my, uh, I need to change the pitch here real quick. So let me just go back real quick because I don't like that jumping around. So let me go to my, uh, outputs and let me go to, oops, let me go to my pitch and edit and we're going to go to our sub trim and just raise it one okay hopefully that should stop it all right so what this fifth what this 1005 tells you is if your throttle happens to be here if you look at my screen 1046 the quad won't arm okay the quad will uh reject to arm because you are not at your low point so i set this low i don't know why beta flight put it in 1050 because i feel like that's too high um, especially if your quad does not have the angle feature set to where it needs to be at a, a minimum angle in order to arm. Uh, because then if you flip your switch by accident, you have a little bit more movement to actually activate the motors while you could be carrying a rubber. Anyways, for safety purposes, I say keep it at 1,005 um, because a five on the arm, uh, on the uh, throttle doesn't even move the motors, right? But 50 can, it will. All right, so 1,005 and 2,000, everything here looks good. Now, the other thing now we're going to do is we're actually going to go and you're going to see here how I've done my switches, right? So if you look at my controller and I'm going to now try to zoom out. Okay, so here's how my switches are done. All right. And uh, I'll keep these images running side by side because I think it might be it might be easier there. So let's do that. Okay, so I have my top left switch right here. And if you watch the screen as I flip that my auxiliary one moves. Okay. That is my arming switch. I have it as a two-way switch. That means that I don't just go to the middle position for this. I go all the way to the top position, right? And by doing that, it means that if I accidentally bump this and move it into middle, my quad will still stay armed. That's why I put on a three-way switch, all right? So this is my arming switch. Over here is my flight mode switch, which is going to be auxiliary two. The way I have this set up is I have, I have acro mode as position one. I have acro with air as position two. And I have horizon mode as position three. I use each of them that way. And while some people don't use acro without air, I do because sometimes I'm testing and I need to cut my motors uh, to zero and I do not want the uh, air mode kicking in and keeping my uh, motor spinning at a certain speed, right? And that's especially if I want to test uh, the way the quad pounds into the ground, for example, on an on integrity test, okay? And then I have for my, um, let me see what I've got going here now. Okay. so. For my, um, I don't know why I'm flipping both auxiliaries on this one. I'll have to check, but this is my fail safe right here. All right, and it should be three, but there must be something wrong. So, but what this does is it takes me to the next part of what I need to show you, okay? So when you wanna set your switches, hit your menu button, find your model that you're on, click page, and click page again, and click page again. All right, now here's your inputs, right? This is your input screen right here. And um, so what I have, and I have to check to see why this has happened. Um, so I have 
input one, these are, these are one, two, three, and four, okay? So one, two, three, and four, or however they number it. So we're starting with five. Five is arm. Five is arm, and so I set it as arm, and that is the SA switch, which is this switch right here. So if you wanted to go in there and edit it, you could see that I labeled it arm, and I went down to the source, and if you flip this, see, if you flip a different switch, if you click it and flip a switch, it'll pick a different switch. I clicked it and I picked SA, all right? Now I'll show you how to set one up, so I'm just showing you. Right now I'm trying to figure out why I have two things moving. So we have arm, we have mode, which is this switch here, and then we have uh, beeper, which should be this switch here, and then we have fail safe. Okay, so I, I did give beeper and fail safe two different things, and I'm not gonna do that, so. Oh, sorry, I want to help you. You got it? Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change this because I do not want Beeper to be on its own. So I'm going to select, uh, I'm going to get rid of this one if I can, and I'm going to click delete. Okay. And then, I don't know if I can move this, but let me see if I, yeah, I'll click it, and I'm just going to move, move it up. Oops. Sorry, I am trying to delete this and I shouldn't have. So let me just do this and delete. And I, oh, this is for the music. Okay, so I understand that what I did. So let me just delete all these. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just make a fail safe one, okay? So let's go to number seven, which is our fail safe. And I don't know what this is, but let me delete. Sorry, let me delete this and I'll show you guys how to set this up. Okay, so delete. All right, now we're gonna to go to seven and we're gonna hold the enter button down and we're gonna hit edit, okay? And I'm going to uh, label this as, our, well, because we, we need our input, right? So let me just kind of show you what we've done here. So when I go to edit this, see how the input is mode? Okay, so when you go back, uh, sorry, I'm just getting this done. So when, here when we go, we're gonna, I'd rather just set this up as new. So let me see if I can just set it up as new. Let me delete this and we'll just do the whole thing. All right, so we're gonna set up a new switch and this is how you would do it. So we're gonna call it, um, click on your input and just type uh, F-A-I. That'll be for fail safe and that's gonna be for our, our stuff, okay? And then here you can type uh, F-A-I. Okay, so let me switch this. Okay, so now on your source, click enter, and then flip the failsafe switch, which is gonna be this one, okay? As I toggle this, it's gonna automatically do it, and there we go, all right? So you can see where it fills it in. Okay, now hit enter, and just hit exit now, you're done, okay? So now as you can see, we have arm, mode, and fail, okay? That's set, now press page, and go to your mixer. And then here on seven, this needs to, I'm gonna delete these, sorry, this is my old model and I should have done this already. I didn't realize that it was in here like this. So let me just delete this. Okay, and I'm gonna delete this one. So now we're gonna to go to match our numbers, so channel seven, and we're gonna call the mixer name and we're gonna call it fail, F-A-I-L. Okay, and that's it, I'm gonna leave it at that. The source it automatically has, the source is our input uh, channel, which is the FAI channel that we did, which correlates to this switch over here, right? And we're just going to leave everything else the same. We're going to click exit, okay? Now, I do not have anything else associated. So now, if you look at all I deleted, if you look at the screen now, when I flip, um, when I flip, oh, my quad is telling me I haven't done anything. So hold on one second. Let me arm the motors for a second. Oh, that didn't arm. Hold on. All right, all right, I gotta, I gotta hurry up here because the quad is telling me I didn't do it. Let me turn it off. Let's turn it off for a second. Okay, so um, what we're looking at now is we've done our switch, right? And it's all set up. And so now what we wanna do is we wanna go to our um, receiver tab here. And what we've got now, and I still see this is blinking, so I'm really hoping my transmitter will, there we go. Uh, I've, I've got to fix my antenna issue, and it's not a firmware issue on this one because, uh, at least I don't believe it is, but I'm pretty sure I updated this one. You know what, I mean, I can't, I'm not gonna mess with this thing if it's gonna keep screwing up. Let me just go ahead and desolder this real quick, and I'll just do a firmware update while we're watching, okay? Because this is something you guys are gonna need to do anyway. 
So let me go ahead and grab my firmware cable, which is right here. And if you need one of these, you can find them on our site. If you don't have one, um, I'm just gonna use this one and I'm gonna solder this really quickly and desolder this receiver. Sorry, if anything can go wrong, it will go wrong. Usually when I'm doing something live, I'm pretty sure I did this one, but I built a lot of quads in the last couple days. So just in case I didn't, I'm gonna go ahead and update it again. So um, one of the things that you're gonna wanna do is you wanna get your firmware. Now that is in a video uh, that I have on how to do your firmware, but I am gonna go to the XM Plus and I'm gonna download this version of XM Plus right here onto my receiver. So let me just go ahead, see if I can do this without too much trouble. Let's see if I pull it out the front of the quad maybe. Gotta get a handle on this wire here if possible. If not, it's just, well, you know what? I'll just undo this screw then. I should be able to get it straight from there. It could be a little difficult to solder back on, but let me go ahead and do this. Okay, so you're gonna wanna have this firmware loaded. And if you don't know how to do that, like I said, there is a whole series that I've done on getting your um, uh, firmware onto your receiver using the uh, SD card. So please watch that if you need to. That'll help explain it. Let me just right now get this off so I can at least get going here. All right, so I'm gonna take this off. Now I've got two spacers, two standoffs off. All right, now I can get to my uh, setup a little bit easier. So let me just go ahead and try to not screw this up. And to do that, I will just lightly remove each one of these cables. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to really quickly solder my uh, firmware update cable onto this. Uh, if I can find it, I just had it, I think. Let me see. Uh, where the heck did it go? Uh, I'll use this one. Okay. So remember, on your firmware update, and I'm not going to use the goggles to see this. I'm going to hopefully just be able to see it on my own. Uh, you put your S bus to your S bus right there. And hopefully this will stick. I don't know if I got that or not. Without my glasses, it's a little tough, but I don't feel like changing all the cameras right now or moving everything around. I might have to, though, if I can't see. Okay, there's my S bus. And then I'll put my power here. If I can. Very sloppy, but I just hit temporary. All right, never mind. Goggles it is. Uh, it wins. I lose. It wins. So let me just do this, give you a better view. Zoom out, and we'll do that while I solder this. Okay, so let's just do that real quick, because I can't see a darn thing. Okay, so we've got our S bus. Go ahead, make sure that's on there good. I have to put some more solder on this, so let me do that real quick. One, two, three. Let's put some here. One. Now, usually you would do this before you soldered it, so you would just push the cables through the holes, but because it's already been soldered, uh, that option is no longer available for me. So let me just try this this way. One. There we go. Sometimes I try to move too quick before the solder even cures. Two. Okay, and then we'll do our S plus for three. All right, so we're connected real quick, kind of crude way to do it, but, and then on the QX7, it goes black, red, yellow into the um, slots right here. So I can now change the angle, kind of show you what I'm working with here. There you go. So we're gonna plug these into the prongs here underneath, like this. Okay, and remember it's black, red, yellow on the QX7. It is not the same way on the X9D. And I'm gonna go ahead and go to the RSSI on 16. And this is for the XM Plus, okay? So just to make sure we're on the right model. And uh, yes, all right. So you can get the RSSI on channel 16. I'll show you how to do that. So, whoops. So let's go back, hold the enter button down, and then you'll get flash escort and click yes. And you should see uh, the progress going. And if you flip this over gently, you will see the lights blinking, which means data is writing. I'm not gonna flip it back over because I don't want those coming on. So we're gonna be doing that real quick. There you go. That's a little extra tutorial on this. So we'll flash that. 
and then it's done we'll go ahead and reattach it and then make sure that we have a good signal if by chance I did not flash it and I was wrong then that would also uh, result in my signal bouncing but uh, I thought I did and I know that my receiver or something with my antenna I, I have no idea it's been abused so I can't get upset about it all right we're moving here we're almost ready okay so now it's done so now we're going to click exit and we'll disconnect the wires and we will go ahead and desolder this real quick so i'll flip it over very quickly just desolder there we go now i gotta get the old man goggles again to put this back on so bear with me a second and i need to take my quad around here and as best as I can try to solder in this little cramped space hopefully find some success so let me just kind of prop this up and see if I can make this work oh this is gonna be a challenge because it doesn't want to sit still so let's see I got to get ground on first I guess if worst case, I'll just tape it for a second. Yeah, that's not going to happen. So let's come up with another plan. Let me see how far I can get these wires out. Where are they coming? Oh, okay. Well, I'll tell you what. We'll go this way. I think this is actually may work like this. So let me just do this. And hopefully I can wiggle it back through all those spaces. It'll be worth a shot at least. All right. the receiver around the table sorry guys uh, I guess I was hoping to have this done in a different segment but it seems as though fate has it that we're gonna do it all right now so let's go ahead and tape this down so it's not running all over the table and now let me go ahead and saw this back on and I do want to cut some of these down so where are my snips here a little bit smaller right now okay and here we go so we'll go I guess we'll start with S bus then S bus on the outside farthest away from us okay five volts in the middle okay and ground on the outside there we go all right so that's it now I somehow feed this back through. Hopefully it'll go. Uh, Lee, don't make this hard on me, please. I'll go ahead and take the uh, 5 volt out because I don't know what's going to happen by touching all these things. So let me just see if I can get this up in there. If I'm lucky, it'll wiggle right through. Perfect. Okay, which is exactly how I had it. And then I'll go ahead and pass it under the camera there we go. If I can get it to go I guess I'll just tilt the camera a little bit and it kind of would go through all right so there we go so we are back in business I just need to move the camera wire so it's not on top of it. Let me do that. And we should be, there we go. Now, let's hope that that settles the problem we had. So I'm gonna put this down now because I think we're pretty much done with the receiver so I can almost glue it down, but I'm just gonna leave it in place. All right, and now we'll go back and see how we're looking. So we've got the radio, got the receiver. Let's go ahead and get ready to power this up and we'll plug in our uh, USB, okay? So we know we're good on the screen, and now we're gonna go ahead and let's do a top view and see what happens, okay? So, no, there we go, we're good. Okay, so we've got our signal now, everything looks good, and now let's look at our Betaflight screen, okay? So I'm gonna use the side-by-side, -side, 
And now you can see that if I go to receiver, right, that new switch that I did now activates auxiliary three, okay? Auxiliary two is going to be our mode switch and auxiliary one is gonna be our arm switch. So when we go, now that we have this set, we're gonna to go to modes and we're just gonna start setting it up. So my arming switch is gonna be auxiliary one, like I said, and I'm gonna stretch it over two spaces. It's a three-way switch, so switch one here, position one, position two, position three, I want two and three to be active. Horizon, I'm gonna set that on my mode as the farthest uh, on my switch two, auxiliary two. So I'm gonna flip that. Uh, I'm gonna go down to fail safe. We know that's three, so I'm gonna to toggle that switch. It's gonna to go to three. And I'm gonna move this all the way to the back. That way, if I accidentally hit it in the middle, I don't activate my fail safe, okay? Uh, I will put my beeper, although I did not put a beeper on here, but I will put my beeper setting to middle and fail safe. Okay, and I'll click, uh, well, I'll click save in just a second. And then I'm gonna go to air mode. Air mode is my middle position of my mode. So what this is telling you is, the way this is set is in position one, I'm in acro mode. Position two, I'm acro with air, and you can see that light up. And position three, I will be in horizon mode, okay? And then for my beeper, middle is, oops, yeah, that's right. Okay, so middle is beeper. Uh, whoops, I accidentally hit that as auxiliary two, it needs to be auxiliary three. Uh, so middle is beeper, and then end is beeper and fail safe, okay? All right, so let me click save. Hopefully that makes sense there. All right, now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and check the motors, right? So um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, click disconnect. So, um, okay, one thing, now that we've got everything set, one thing I do want you guys to note is I want you to go back into your, um, before we do our BL Heli, I want you to go and connect again. And there is an issue with one shot and multi shot on this. And I think it's a firmware issue. For the time being, what I want you to do is go back to your configuration. I want you to drop down to one shot, 125 and click save, okay? Uh, before we go to BL Heli, all right? So once we do that, I want you to disconnect and I want you to then plug in your uh, LiPo and I want you to open your BL Heli and find your COM port and click connect. All right, and I want you to go ahead and flash the firmware. So just click flash and click okay. And it's gonna tell you it found the Emax 20 amp multi. Uh, that's fine, the 20 amp uh, firmware will work on the 30 amp. So just click yes and go ahead and update all the firmware on your, um, on your ESCs, okay? All right, so click next, then we'll do the next one. Yes, we wanna write that one. Next, okay, okay. All right, so we're gonna do all four. It won't take very long, it's almost done. I'm gonna start this next one. I'm gonna go run and grab my coffee real quick. Yes. And then let's tell it to write. Okay, yes. All right. Be right back. Let me grab my coffee. Uh-huh. It's right here. Right. <clears throat> All right. So now we have one more to go. That's ESC number three. And so we're gonna go ahead and write that, and then we're gonna go to ESC number four. And uh, initially in this video, I talked about multi-shot, something not working with multi-shot. I'm gonna have to find out. I, like I said, I think it's the ESC firmware, but uh, Emacs says it does multi-shot ready, but for some reason, and my customer had that problem, and he is correct on that with the firmware that we're using. So there may be an additional firmware pack. I know at one time Emacs did have an additional firmware uh, to use on this that they supplied separately from BL Heli. I'll have to go see if that's still the case. I figure they would have updated it by now, but in either case, we've done all our updates. What we wanna make sure of right now is that this program by TX is still checked. And we wanna go ahead and one more time, just for safety sake, click right setup. It's already done it, but just to make sure we didn't change anything. Okay, so everything's done there, all right? So now that we're done, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect. Now we need to calibrate the motors, okay? So to do that, to calibrate the ESCs, I mean. So to do that, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect our LiPo, all right? And we're gonna to go to beta flight and we're gonna connect. And at that point, with your configuration set as one shot 125, you're gonna to go to motors and you're gonna arm it here. Make sure you have no props on or anything else and raise the master all the way up to maximum, okay? At that point, plug in your LiPo and you're gonna hear some tones. I wait for them to finish. So basically you start it with the master at max and then you plug in the LiPo. And then when it's done beeping that first round, slide it back down to zero and then it'll do the second round of beeps 
<coughs> at that point, if you just want to see what's happening, you could slowly turn that on, just very carefully, and you'll see your motor start spinning. Now take note of the fact that this quad is motor one, two, three, and four. These two spin clockwise, these two spin counter. So while you don't have any props on, go ahead and check to see if they're spinning the right way. You just put your fingers on them and whichever way they start pulling your fingers. So these are spinning counter and these are spinning clockwise. So our direction is perfect. Let's go ahead and lower the master down and turn that off. Disconnect, go back to BL Heli, read the setup again, and you're gonna see all four. Now what you wanna do is you wanna look at your values here, okay? This is how you can tell if you have a bad ESC, for example, and this is what going straight to D-Shot does not tell you, all right? So on, on ESCs, it can handle D-Shot. So here, um, you will see that we have a, let me see if I can get that screen a little bit better for you here. Okay, so let's do this. There, okay. So what you can see here is that um, under, if you right click on motor one, you're gonna see the minimum throttle is 1016 and the maximum at 2020. Two is gonna be 1016, 2012. Three is 1016, 2000. And four is 1016, 2020. The rule here is, and what I do, rule of thumb on what I do, is the minimum throttle needs to be the maximum number between all four. So since it happens to be the same, 1016 won't change. On the maximum throttle, it's gonna be the minimum number, number between all four. So. Hello. <laughs> so in this case, you have, you have, uh, hold on, you have 20, sorry, I messed this up, so let me go over here. So you have 2020, then you have 2012, and 2000 and 2020. It's a kind of a bigger gap between 2000 and 2020, but in either case, it means they all go to 2000, because that's the lowest number. So go ahead and click all four of them, and then change this to 2000, and then click, that'll be quiet, and then click write setup, and it's gonna write three of the four because one of them already had that number, the other three did not, and now you're set, okay? Now you can remove the programming by TX because you're not gonna be programming anymore, so just so that you don't accidentally end up in programming mode, go ahead and remove that and go ahead and click write setup again. Now it's gonna write all four of them, okay? And you're done. Click disconnect, you'll hear your beep, and now uh, when you go to your um, uh, quad, and you flip your arm switch, which is right here. And I guess I can do a top view now if I wanted. So let's try that. Okay, so let's start, let's try this again. So let's say you're carrying your quad and you're plugging it in. You plug the battery in, right? And your quad is kind of set like this. So we're gonna reset this and tell, tell the quad this is actually level. Okay, so it's gonna now level out because I'm calibrating the accelerometer, right? But now I put it on the ground and now look, it says now because of that, this is now centered, or this is now level for my quad. So to fix that, before you ever fly, the screen top left, straight down, and it's gonna level it out. You see how that happened? That's a good method and a good way to do everything before you ever take off. Go ahead and set your stuff uh, and make sure to do that key, the, the, those stick movements, and hold it for a couple seconds so your quad knows it's now on level ground and it didn't associate you carrying it or moving it as being level, okay? Now, when we go to our, because our motors, is, our motors tab was turned on, let me go ahead and do that. Now we can arm it, okay? And we can see our different in horizon mode, in acro mode, all right? And we can test our motors are spinning clockwise and counterclockwise, and everything is great. Now all you have to do is flip your VTX on if you want video, and put your props on, and fly. Everything else is set, okay? Guys, I hope that helps. Um, remember, your failsafe is here, flip it, and everything stops, okay? Um, that's it. So uh, let me switch back here. I hope that, I know, sorry, it was a little longer than I expected because we had that issue with the um, uh, receiver. Unfortunately, my radio is, I think, needing a serious update. I did an update last night and I think it screwed it up. So I'm gonna go back and fix that and make a video on that as well. Other than that, the quad is ready to go. Uh, this is actually Dustin's. So Dustin, congratulations, this is yours. You're getting this one. I just wanted to program it before I shipped it out. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and close it up and test fly it real quick. And then it's on its way to you. All right, guys, if you have any questions, hit me up. Uh, make sure to follow us. Wait, is it follows? Like us on Facebook. Follow us on YouTube. Is that how that works? Okay, so there's that and that. All right. And then uh, you can always reach me at targetcyclonefpv.com. I got all these cool little things. And then what is that? Red one FPV. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's me. All right. All right, guys, other than that, uh, safe flying. God bless you. If you have any questions, hit me up. Thanks a lot for watching. Sorry it was a little longer than expected, but we'll see you soon. Okay, if you have any questions, uh, I already said that. Goodbye.